The Fish in Canada Show is brought to you in part by MyOutdoorTV.com Outdoor television on the internet Stearns, the life jacket experts The Rocket Fishing Rod And RadioWorld.ca Together we'll go fishing To me, fishing isn't just about catching a big one, or boating a limit for that matter. It's about the experience. Tying on your favorite lure, making sure your gear's all ready. <laughs> yeah, it's about the whole enchilada. But there's one element though that sits high on top of that list, and that is anticipation of a great outing. And on today's program, my anticipation is way off the charts. If you watched last year's shows, you probably saw one of my favorite episodes where Pete, Mike, and I ventured into a little obscure bass lake in the fall and proceeded to clean house on both large and smallmouth. And we're talking big fish too. Threes, fours, fives, and even the odd six. Well, you guessed it, folks. My anticipation's high because we get a return visit to our little piece of bass heaven known as Hasty Lake. Only this time, we're there at the opening of the season. It's mayhem in the shallows. I was just experimenting with my uh, with my rat. It's like, will the fish hit this thing? Well, guess what? <laughs> oh man, he annihilated two twitches. Bang, gone. History. Oh. <laughs> How's that? Not bad, huh? Oh man, that is gorgeous. It's a big small, but he's heavy. That's a good solid four. <laughs> there, we'll let him go right back. See you, buddy. <laughs> one for one. As you can see on this episode, we don't always have the luxury of our Princecraft 198 and our 200 Merc. But that, my friends, just proves that you don't need a big boat to catch big fish. With a few electronics, an electric motor, a 9.9 or 15 horsepower outboard, in a light aluminum boat, anybody can fish effectively. This looks good. What I'm gonna fish here is a transition between a rock hard ledge, a face coming down in the water, solid rock, and it goes into a swampy, marshy little, just a little bit of reed, not, not a whole lot, but those areas sometimes are like magnets, especially in these back bays that are really fertile with a little deep water. Places like this, the fish will just cruise in and out of that, that, little, that little different, uh, transition zone and of course you couldn't ask for better conditions not a breath of wind the sun is just going down over the treetops this is low light conditions at their best it's not nighttime it's not completely dark but it's just enough there he is oh, nice fish now just see you saw that fish come up twice. First time he missed it completely, and I let him have it. I didn't jerk it. It's not a big fish. It's, whoa, not a big fish. But that was really cool what happened there. I'll explain to you. It's a, it's a large mouth. <laughs> He's got that rat in his face big time, man. <laughs> big time. He is full of rat. <laughs> big lean, big lean bucket mouth. Oh, that's, that's not that small. That's not that small. Yeah, I might be able to put my fingers in there. There it is. That's not that small fish. My fish is, that looks like to be a male, probably finished doing his deal uh, about three weeks ago, I'd say, maybe a month ago. And he's just uh, called this territory his own. 
This fish will pretty much control this whole little patch of back bay here. Isn't that sweet? Spawned out, tired old male. The tail is just starting to patch up from the uh, ordeal of spawning rituals. You'll see there's still a bit of blood in there. That is a pretty fish. <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. Get back in there, buddy. That is cool. Now, he, he came in and hit it the first time. Most, most people will, when you're fishing a top water bait, will react to the visual part of the strike. And, it, and it's just a normal tendency. I mean, you're watching this thing and all of a sudden your world comes to an end. It just blows up. So the first thing you want to do is, is heave back on that bait. And 99% of the time, all you're going to catch is air. You're not going to catch the fish. You got to feel the weight. As hard as that is to do, you've got to wait till the fish pulls that line down. Then you set the hook, because that means he's got the bait, he's turned and he's swimming the other way. Set the hook, it's going to catch something. If you set it on the reaction, the visual part of the strike, he hasn't even got it yet. He's just blowing up. And generally, your, your reaction is so quick, you'll pull it away from him as, he, as he's trying to grab it. That was cool. <laughs> I, now, I doubt very much in a small area like this, I doubt that there'll be another fish. However, having said that, if I didn't throw another cast in there, I'd be an absolute fool. Because I mean, it is just too perfect. A lot of things change throughout the season of bass fishing, and depth may be the most critical factor. During last year's Hasty Lake trip in the fall, a lot of the fish were situated along a bluff bank in 20 plus feet of water. On this trip, being early summer, I guarantee the fish will be much shallower. I could use the same topwater approach, but I'm using it in a totally different situation. I don't know whether you can pick that up or not, but this bait, aside from sounding and looking great, it's putting out an awful lot of bubbles. It's very similar to a pop R that's got the big open concave mouth. What's putting out those bubbles are those massive little ears. And when it's moving through the water, it's very similar to having that big concave lip that a pop R does. And that's what's causing that gurgly, bubbly effect on the surface. That drives fish absolutely crazy. There's a bass. That's a bass. Okay, baby. Nah, a hey, little guy. Look at him shaking, rocking, and rolling. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> yeah, got, not gonna get rid of that one. Not gonna get rid of that one that easy, buddy. <laughs> oh, geez, you know I might need the net on that guy. That's a nice fish. Oh, that's a little bigger than we thought, buddy. That's nice. <laughs> Boy, they're so nice. That's a big, healthy fish. That fish is done spawning, and uh, he's just looking to find a home. Right over here, off this deep ledge. Off you go. These low light conditions are perfect because what happens, the fish, that would tend, that fish would normally be hiding underneath a, a, an overhang or around a boulder on the shady side of a boulder. But when the sun starts going down like this, everything gets dark down there a lot quicker than it does above the water line. And they come out and they start just roaming around. And that's when top water baits like this, I'm telling you, they are, not only are they fun, but they're the most effective because these fish are aggressively seeking prey under the lower, lower light. Anything on the surface and they smack it. They don't care what it is. It could be a bird for all they care. It doesn't matter. I, as I said before, I have absolutely no idea what a white mouse would be doing out here in the middle of the lake that attracts them. I don't think it matters. Mind you, the action on this is spectacular and that's probably what it is. And then when they get close enough to have a look, because a lot of times, especially a top water bait, you'll, you'll twitch it and then stop. And usually the strike will, will, will happen as soon as you move it again. That's because the fish has been under there checking out the bait and it finally was convinced that it's, it's a go. So when you move it, it'll hit. And if the, the bait is not realistic enough, a lot of times they just won't. They'll follow it right to the boat. And that's when you see them coming up to the boat and then just flashing off to the side. They finally realized it wasn't real, but that is a real mouse. I have absolutely no, no idea why they'd be chasing a white mouse, but who cares? Without a doubt, my favorite form of bass fishing is using topwater baits. Now I normally use hard popper style lures, but on this trip, I snuck in a box of secret weapons that I'll guarantee you have never seen before. It's not uncommon to find both species of bass cohabitating a little corner like this, by the way. Bass are bass, 
and generally um, they predate on pretty much the same uh, the same critters. And in a lake like this, because the uh, their habitat is very similar. They're, in other words, this lake is not a real swampy lake. Uh, for the most part, it's a hard base a basin, a lot of rock, and so you get both species cohabitating the same uh, the same water. There he is. He just slurped it. Ooh, nice fish. Nice fish. Ooh, that's a smoker. <laughs> he didn't even really smack it. He just slurped it. Uh, yeah, we'll be netting this guy for sure. That was so cool. If I hadn't been watching that, I wouldn't have even known he was on. He just slurped at that. Whoa, baby. Nice, Molly. Normally, that, that kind of fish just comes up and hits that thing big time. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Whoa. Nice fish. Isn't that gorgeous? Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Smalley on a rat. Actually, a mouse. <laughs> this is neat. Isn't that a beauty? Wow. There's another one. There's a large mouth in here. That's why I came down to this corner. And a smallie's out here on this log, but I think there's a largemouth back in the far back. I saw him earlier, right about there. This rat, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I think the key here, especially in the shallow water, you can stop it. And when it stops, it looks real because that fur just kind of moves around the tail. It, 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 it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Wow. The province of Ontario is known for its fantastic fly-in walleye pike and trout fishing. But what's little known is the great fly-in bass fishing opportunities. Now, although not as prevalent as the, quote, more popular species, there are some incredible honey holes out there just waiting to be explored. The commercial air service and tourist establishment, Lozon Aviation, has spread the fame of Northern Ontario for over 40 years. This family-owned airbase, operating from the community of Algoma Mills, just outside of Blind River, Ontario, is the gateway to some of Canada's most pristine outdoor wilderness adventures. The McKellar Service, no less than nine fly-in wilderness camps, each one an adventure just waiting to happen. With only a little time spent on the internet, the traveling bass angler can literally have a host of fly-in bass lakes at their disposal. A simple search of fly-in bass fishing or hitting the Go Fish in Ontario site will have you well on your way in no time. Come on, baby. I don't think he's that big. I don't think so, but oh, nice little large mouth. Took it almost at the boat. A little farther, he'd had to, he would have. A little farther, he would have had to climb into the boat to hit that bait. <laughs> Boy, he got himself hung up good, though. That guy probably followed it for a while. There's a rock out there in the middle, and uh, he probably followed it in. Boy, they love this, this mouse. <laughs> it's cool. He's on, little guy. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, boy, he's pulling good. He's pulling real good. But he's not big, though. You know what it is? I gotta look at him run. <laughs> That's a small fish, but my God, he is running. That's a real small fish. Well, he's not tiny by any means, but. Boy, they love this thing. Well, I definitely have a new favorite lure, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, that's nice too. Just, they just love it. 
I don't know what they're thinking. That's, that's right out here in open water. That's the best part. That's probably a schooling fish. And uh, generally we find those things, and I think I might have. You'll, uh, if they're really aggressive, you should luck out in getting two or three. An angler that uses topwater baits is kind of like a designated hitter in baseball. Play ball! Whoa. He's on. You're up there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to hit that baby out of the park. No good. Oh, my God. Which means you're going to have a lot of strikeouts, or in our case, a lot of missed fish, and they very seldom come back to hit the same bait. Ooh. He missed it. That's got to hurt. There's the pitch. <laughs> Strike three. You're out. He'll feel that one tomorrow. He didn't like the taste of that rat, obviously. I was very fortunate that Hasty Lake, the body of water I'm fishing today, has had very little pressure so far. In fact, only one couple was in before me, but they reported catches of 100 to 200 fish a day. Now, normally I'd be worried about such big numbers, but on this little Ontario oh, bass is, factory, nice it just means the lake's on fire. <laughs> that rat is killing them. That rat is killing them, man. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, when do you see this thing? <laughs> come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> How's that? Look how fat he is. I think he just ate something. I think he ate a rat. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Wow. There's a ton more. That was a shallow water fish, which means there should be a pile of them cruising out here. That is beautiful, man. Wow. <laughs> Outstanding. When you dissect the typical topwater lure, there's really not a lot alive about it. The baits I'm using today, however, are all about the enticement features. This bait is nothing short of phenomenal, little guy. Little wee tiny, nah, not tiny, but. Whoa. Oh, nice fish, he's not tiny at all. <laughs> Nice small though. He hardly made a sound when he took that. Hardly made a sound. I didn't even know. Oh, nice small mo. Nice small mo. Now that sun is down behind the tree, so there's virtually no light at all on the surface where that fish took the bait. I mean, it, it is pretty much lights out for them. And so they're just roaming around free, man. It's a free-for-all. You could probably sit here and catch all of them. Oh, nice smallmouth. Nice smallmouth. Oh, that's a big fish. He could be a little fatter, but he is so long. Okay. Oh, that's a nice smallmouth. <laughs> that's what we call a slurpee. He didn't smack it, he didn't come out of the water and jump down on it. He just got underneath it and just, just slurped it down. <laughs> That's great, man. Off you go. Wow. Fish in Canada Hotspots, the ultimate fishing guide presents Getting There. Today's hotspot is a big underwater boulder in Hasty Lake. The waypoint on your screen will take you right there. Every time we came up on this rock, we saw big fish around it. This would be a phenomenal early season hotspot as big female bass will spawn directly beside the rock. Cast a tube jig right next to the boulder and hang on. To get to Hasty Lake, we took Highway 400 North to 69 North, then took Highway 17 West. We traveled west to Algoma Mills 
and then to Lausanne Aviation on Lake Lausanne. From there, it's a quick float plane trip into the great cottage on beautiful Hasty Lake. Lausanne Aviation is a family-owned company that's been in business since 1959. They offer nine fly-in cabins on nine different lakes. The flights are anywhere from five to 20 minutes each way. Visit fishingcanada.com for more details. Fish in Canada was brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, serious bug protection. Prince Craft Boats, the more you know, the better we look. And Mercury, number one on the water. Closed captioning provided by Ontario Tourism. Go fish in Ontario.com. For more Fish in Canada, visit fishincanada.com. <laughs>